Did you know for the last actually couple of years, FTKs had the ability to automate quite a few different features from case creation to processing to even connecting to various SOAR and SIEM solutions but we've made it even better in the last few years and even easier and more accessible. So here's the thing. A couple of years ago, when we were Access Data, before Xtero bought us, we built the FTK API. And this allowed agencies and corporations to automate various functionality, such as processing a case, assigning a user, and even searching that case for given keywords as well as like maybe on the corporate side or the federal agency side or something doing internals, you could connect it to a source seam solution such as Palo Alto. The issue back then was while it was fully mature, fully developed, super awesome, it required that you have somebody that was able to code the necessary connections and all that sort of stuff manually. And so the agencies that kind of requested this functionality came back and said, hey, this all works, this is all cool, it's great but we don't want to spend the time to code it or we don't have the people to code it, that sort of th stuff. We want to be able to open this up to more users without those users knowing Python coding and able to do that. So fast forward a couple years, Xtero buys us and we continue our development on our API and then we release FTK Connect. FTK Connect is the interface that lays over the top of this API that we've had for a couple of years, but makes it super accessible. And so that's what we wanna take a look at today. We'll, we'll go over some of the features briefly, but I really wanna show you how simple it is and easy to use. So we're able to configure FTK Connect by accessing it through our web interface, which we call FTK Central. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in. And assuming you have the licensing for FTK Connect, you'll see the little icon right here to launch FTK Connect. So once you're inside of FTK Connect, you can see all the various automations that you have created. All these happen to be watch folders. You can see the dates that they were configured, if they were ever modified, how many times they've run, and you can toggle them on and off depending on when you need them to be run. So let's go ahead and walk through the creation process and we'll talk about some of the different automations that you can run. So we go to create, we'll create one, we'll call it uh, for the video. All right, you can give it a description if you wanted, click next. We have a list of triggers here. So we have watch folder. That's what we'll talk about and show today. So we'll kind of skip over it for now and we'll explain it as we go through because let's not be redundant. API triggers. So remember I said that we used to have to code everything in um, to be able to get anything to automate. Well, we didn't want to remove that ability from our users to take FTK Connect and, and make it more than what even we currently had at whatever time they had it. So let's say you want to hook to Palo Alto or some other SOAR or SIEM solution, you would use API Trigger. And so let's say that somebody downloaded a ton of information off of the Google Drive, Palo Alto detects this surge in activity and kicks out an alert. FTK Connect would see that alert and then perform whatever action you wanted. Maybe we wanna collect from that machine, see what they pulled down, see what else other connections they might be hooked up to, are they exfilling data? Or maybe we wanna capture their volatile memory, whatever the case may be, right? But it's based off of that communication between the SOAR and SIEM and FTK Connect to launch a forensic process using FTK Enterprise and say an agent or whatever. Let's say you wanted to hook up to a case management system or any other, like proprietary system within your network. You can do that by coding it yourself and creating any connection you want through the API trigger and then automating FTK processes here in Connect. So that's where you would use that and you can go behind the scenes and kind of do whatever you want. The world is your oyster. Schedule is a schedule, obviously. So if you wanted a certain thing to happen at a certain time, let's say every Thursday night, you want to grab a volatile memory capture of a certain machine, and you don't want to have somebody sitting at a desk to do that. So you can set up a schedule so that every day at a certain time, it'll reach out and capture that information. And when your analyst comes back in the next day to take a look at that, they can compare processes and do all the things that they would do with memory analysis in enterprise. So no problem there. Then you can also set up 
manual launch. And you're like, well, wait a minute, we're talking about automation and now we have a manual one. Well, you can create a set, set of steps that you want to automate, but only kick it off when you want it to go. So let's say you wanted to process something in a directory or run a collection or something like that, but you don't wanna to have to manually configure all the details for it. You just wanna kick it off with one thing. So you could come in here and say, okay, hey, we've imaged a bunch of stuff. We've captured a bunch of things. We wanna process that data in a set certain way. So we're gonna kick off this automation to make sure that it is done right. And that's one of the advantages of using automation in this stage of your case is if you have lab standards or even legal standards that you have to process things in a certain way, you can set those in automation so that you don't have users that could, oh, I forgot a setting or I added one too many or I forgot to run this certain step, etc. You can just automate it so that it's performed the same way each time if that's important to you. All right, so let's take a look at a watch folder. We select the path, we'll browse out, we'll choose um, SysSummer, oops, misspelled it, but we're gonna go with it. Uh, system Summary Only, we'll hit, click uh, Case Details. We're gonna create a new case. We'll select a user, we'll just assign it to the administrator in this case. We could also do user groups. And now we wanna process that case. Any of the processing profiles you've created in FTK, you can load up in here. So be sure that if you create your own custom profiles, you save them to the database so that you can use them in your automation. So we can come down through and, uh, you know, whatever, but we'll just pick, uh, you know, but we'll just pick forensic processing. Okay. And we'll go to search and tag. Now this is cool because for many different types of cases, you may have keywords that you search for everyone. This is especially prevalent in our law enforcement, you know, where they have like CSAM cases and you have this list of terms that you wanna knock out each case, cool. You can have a text folder with that or a text file with that. And uh, you know, you have drug terms, those types of things. Maybe in enterprise, you have proprietary terms that you want to check for based on documentation, okay? Or things that you're looking for in a legal matter that is coming up so you're, you're doing a quick search of those types of things and you wanna label all the files that have those key terms in it so you know either to make them privileged or that's what's gonna be taken out and given to counsel, whatever the case may be, right? Um, you can do this automatically. So, uh, you know, you could browse out and hit browse and we come out and I can never remember which drive I have it stored. Oh, I found it, F drive, okay. We select the directory that contains a text file. Let me show you what that text file looks like. So we come out to F drive and we come into search terms and we just have a search terms text here. And so you can see like, here's the term Kara and the label would be names. So, and then, so search term, label, search term, label. And so you can see here that I have Kara and Waco both under names, they'll both be found under that label so that when you go into the case, you don't have to run these searches, you don't have to find them, you can just go in and look at that label in the overview tab and and you know figure out what it hit on. So super simple. And it's really easy to update because you can just come in and say, you know, video and you know, I don't know, class. I don't know, add, add it to whatever label you want. So you don't need a space. It can be either way that you see here, or you can add a space. It doesn't matter, but you see how it is. We can go ahead and search, save that, close it. All right, now that search term list, we've updated it. So you can make it kind of an organic, a live document and continue to update your search terms simply by dropping them there. You can edit it super easy. It's just a text file, change the labels, modify the labels, add new ones, take them out, whatever you wanna do. So super cool um, with that, uh, feature because then it'll label them there. You can also export based on the automation. So let's say that you're going to kick out a portable case. Your workflow is you get the image, you bring it in, you process it, but somebody else is going to analyze it, not you, at least not in the first pass. So you can say, okay, hey, anything that's hit by the search and tag, okay, let's say you have a legal matter, you got to search for certain terms within your documentation and the documents that you're looking at. So you're gonna say, hey, anything that hits on these search terms, okay, kick it out to a portable case so that counsel can look at it in native view, they can mark it, bookmark it, uh, you know, go through the whole thing and decide what they wanna do, 
Okay, so that would be portable case. You can, of course, export out in native view or raw files, okay? Um, 81 image, so if you wanted to kind of filter out your stuff, send it out for analysis in some other tool, eDiscovery or Forensic, doesn't matter, and you could do it load file for those two, okay? If you wanted to kick off a collection, you could do that too. Notice the error here. That's because we're set to a uh, watch folder and watch folder doesn't jive with collections. So, but if you wanted to go out, grab some data off of a system, that's how you do it. You configure your collection. So we have that all configured. We click finish and it's done. Now, if we put anything into the watch folder, which we have right here, so summary, like an 81, if we drop that in there, it's gonna create, it's gonna go through and do that automation. Now there's one cool thing here, the way that we manage it. So it said create a new case. Well, case has to have a name. So how are we gonna do that? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up my watch folder and I'm gonna right click and create a new directory, okay? And we'd, we give it a case name. This is where you would name the case. So it might be something like, however you name your case, like uh, case 2023, it's you know, 0823 or something. I don't know, that's a horrible name, you know, video, okay? And so you have your case name. So at this point, you could either, if your image was already created, you could just drop it in to that directory inside of the watch folder, or you can actually do a full-fledged workflow where you can image a drive and you just create that new directory inside of your watch folder as the destination for imager. And then you don't have to do this whole drag and drop thing. Again, making it super easy, super quick. FTK Connect will sit there and watch that directory and check every few seconds to see if the file is growing. And there's also a slight wait period before it kicks off as well, because we were a little too efficient when we first created it, you would create a new directory and then FTK connect to be like, hey, I got something in there, I gotta do something with it. Noticing that the directory was done creating, it wasn't growing in size. Well, yeah, 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 but it's an empty directory, I'm gonna put something in it, hold off for just a bit. So you can create that directory, kick off the imager process, and it's gonna start to drop stuff in there. And then it'll just run, process the case, create it, and get it ready to go. 12 seconds later. As soon as FTK Connect gets a hold of it and starts to process it, it's gonna drop it in the process folder. I didn't create the process folder. FTK Connect automatically creates it if it needs to be there. So at this point, you can jump into FTK and take a look for, what do we call it? Oh, is that some gross name? So we're gonna refresh that and we see that uh, our case popped up here as soon as we refreshed. And also notice that it gives you an indication in the FTK interface that the it that this case was created using an automation. If we come in here as well, back to the FTK central case list, we can see that the case is in here as well for review. So depends on what system you're using. If you're using FTK central to review data or you're in the core interface of FTK, you, it's the same thing. They hook to the same database. You can swap back and forth and review and whatever you're most comfortable with. So I'm a big fan of FTK Connect. Uh, there's a lot of little things that we don't go over in this video, um, but you know, maybe I'll make a few more going over the little nitpicky things that are super cool that kind of add a little bit of layers on this. And uh, yeah, so make sure that you're using automation. If you don't have FTK Connect, you should. And so it's really accessible to use. You just saw the interface. Um, you can do a lot of things just by click and drag. So you don't need to worry about coding or that sort of thing and you're gonna save a bunch of time and be able to work more cases. So I think it's really fun. Like I said, there's a lot of other things I should create little small short videos to go over it. Um, some of the cool little advanced features and uh, that you can do to take it even further. But yeah, anyway, so hopefully uh, you learned something new. Hopefully you're ready to pick up some automation and make it go even quicker because speed is the name of the game because there's no shortage of cases, I feel that. So thanks for watching and uh, be on the lookout for some more videos on FTK Connect because I really like this uh, feature slash product that we have here. It's super cool. Thanks.